I don't have any pockets, so they were trying to get the mic into the back of my oh, dress. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Sorry Rookie for that. mistake. Thank you. Uh, so I thought I'd start at the very beginning. Um, my parents blessed me with a name that looks really good in a monospace font. Um, that's kind of where my design credentials end, unfortunately. Uh, but for the developers in the room, um, I learnt HTML and CSS when I was about 10 years old. Um, this is the first website I ever made. Um, <laughs> made all those animated GIFs myself in Clarisworks. Um, and to be honest, my development skills haven't progressed much further uh, since here either. Uh, <laughs> but I have, from a very young age, been interested in new technology and um, how kind of old ideas and new ideas can be brought to life in new ways with technology. This is a site I made when uh, Street View first came out. It was called Art View. I found um, old photos, uh, sorry, paintings uh, of kind of streets in different cities around the world. This is Auckland, where I'm from. Um, and you could slide in between the painting and what is, I guess, the public image that we now see, uh, which is the street, street view representation of that place. Um, this is a site. Um, so I have synesthesia, which means that I kind of taste and hear and feel color. So I'm very um, interested in color. This is a site that I made that basically just pulls um, all the colors out of images, um, so every image indexed on a site and ranks um, which hexadecimal color is used the most or which ones are used the most. Um, this is a site I made called Is There Something on My Face? Um, and it just plays your web camera back to you in the shape of a compact mirror. It's very helpful if you're trying to put lipstick on at your desk. Um, and then finally, the Beyonce site. Um, so this just really asked what your boy problem was, um, how you're feeling about it, and then gave you a Beyonce problem, a Beyonce song to solve your problem. Um, and it was picked out quite a bit on the internet, and that was kind of my 15 minutes of fame. Um, unfortunately, I'm not very good at renewing domain names, so none of those sites are, um, are still live. You can find archives of them, but uh, yeah. So what am I doing here? Can't um, obviously code very well, definitely can't design. Um, I am an advertising creative. Um, I used to have the job title digital creative, but they uh, dropped the digital because obviously everything is digital now and what is kind of the distinction between um, digital and the real world, um, it you know, doesn't really exist anymore. Um, so I worked for a little digital shop called Work Club and then we got brought into Have Us, which is obviously a massive advertising network. And I wanted to take you through a project that um, I did for one of my clients, which is uh, Ballantines. The project's called Space Glass. Um, I know that Ballantines are sold uh, quite extensively in Greece, so hopefully some of you guys have tried it before. Um, but if you don't know anything about it, uh, it's the second biggest Scotch whiskey in the world, first biggest in Europe. And it was started by this guy, whose name is George Ballantyne. Um, in the 19th century in Scotland, he kind of innovated the way that whiskey was made and sold. Um, and then he passed the business on to his son, named George Ballantyne, and his grandson, also named George Ballantyne. Uh, and he said to them, apparently, stay true and excellence will be by your side. So Ballantynes kind of have this brand belief that um, if you stay true and um, kind of keep, keep this pioneering spirit with you, um, then you're going to have a good time. Uh, so they came to Work Club with this brief around a glass. Um, if you buy a beer in any bar in the world, it's pretty obvious to everyone in the bar which beer you're drinking based on the glass that it comes in. And that really isn't the same with whiskey. Um, the moment that your kind of association with the brand um, ends is as soon as they uh, pour your drink. Um, there's kind of nothing beyond that that tells everyone that you have this pioneering spirit and that's why you love Ballantines. Uh, so the, the brief was to design a glass. Um, and uh, space class obviously seemed like the right answer. Um, given that this guy has been making, um, has, his whiskey has been made for 200 years and the um, consistency and the quality of the whiskey has been the same for 200 years, it felt like we should create a glass that would uh, live 200 years into the future. Um, I was really obsessed with Elon Musk at the time that uh, this brief came around. Um, and I liked the idea that we uh, would be drinking whiskey in the same way that we 
we were back when um, George invented the thing. Um, but there's an obvious problem with drinking whiskey in space, which is it just floats around and you can't actually get it into your mouth. Um, so I came up with the idea of space glass, presented it to the team. Uh, this was a video that I found of um, how you drink whiskey in space, uh, not whiskey, definitely not how to drink whiskey in space, how you drink liquids in space currently. Um, it's basically a plastic bag and you squeeze uh, the liquid through um, what is essentially a straw into your mouth. And it works absolutely fine for astronauts because they're up there doing their job, um, they're not A, getting drunk, uh, and B, they don't need kind of the ceremony that um, we like to have around uh, drinking alcohol and um, none of the elegance that you get um, with drinking whiskey in a bar um, is needed when you're really just an astronaut um, making cool stuff in space. Um, so I showed this video to uh, the team and the producer on the job um, quite instantly said, absolutely not, space gas is out of scope. There's, if they are drinking out of plastic bags up there, there's no way that we are going to invent something that they haven't already thought of. Um, we can't afford to do this, um, definitely not happening. Um, and he left this sticker on my glasses case, which um, kind of spurred me on. I was like, if he doesn't want to do it, then um, this seems like a fun challenge. <laughs> uh, so he presented to the client, um, had a really wonderful client who, uh, who kind of said whatever idea you're excited about is the idea that we'll go ahead and make um, and could tell that the team was really excited about Space Glass and that Tom in particular was really nervous about it. Um, so that was kind of all the permission we needed. Um, however, in a digital advertising agency, none of us know anything about astrophysics, uh, unsurprisingly. So we commissioned these guys, the Open Space Agency. Uh, they do a lot of work with NASA. Um, this is one of the sessions that we had where they kind of tried to teach us some things about physics, which I will try and teach to you guys. Um, so yeah, they were really excited about the challenge because it's obviously um, something that hasn't been done before because, um, like I said, it's never really been needed before. Uh, and very early on, we came to this theory which is called surface tension. Um, so if you put a straw in a drink, you'll kind of see at the bottom of the straw, some of the liquid will go up into the straw before you even uh, suck on it. Um, straws don't work in space because the gravitational pull doesn't exist. Uh, but surface tension does, and because water has nowhere, water or whiskey has nowhere else to go, it will pull to the side of a capillary. Uh, apologies to whoever is translating this. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so we kind of knew that surface tension uh, would be quite a helpful, helpful thing in this mission. Um, and we prototyped 40 different glasses. Uh, this was one of the first ones. So it just really uh, uses surface tension up the capillaries and up to the mouthpiece. Um, this glass looks quite alien, which is maybe interesting here on Earth. But up in space, it doesn't really deliver on the promise of um, trying to make something that feels like how you drink whiskey here. Uh, so we tried other things. This one, um, the idea was that the capillaries would open when you span the glass, so like when you kind of sniff a whiskey, um, it would use that. Um, but that seemed a little bit complicated. Um, in this glass, uh, there was an idea of a top viewing dome, so you could kind of see the whiskey floating around, and then when you're ready to drink it, um, the surface tension would pull it towards the mouthpiece. Um, and then this one uh, was when we really got to the point of um, 3D printing. This. Uh, was in, this was a prototype to be 3D printed in glass, but obviously glass is not that safe in space because if you smash it, then you've got tiny bits of glass floating everywhere. Um, <laughs> so the final glass is uh, 3D printed. Um, oh, sorry, here's 40 of the different prototypes. Final glass is uh, 3D printed in plastic. Um, and the importance of 3D printing in space, I know that 3D printing is kind of a fad, um, and you know, there are some really important medical uses, but in space it's hugely important because it's really expensive to take materials off Earth. Um, so if anything that you can do in situ, anything that you can make out of moon rock or plastic in this case, if you can recycle it, um, it means it's not going to cost anything or not going to cost as much to make. And there is a 3D printer on the um, International Space Station at the moment. So you can print one of these up there in space. Um, you're definitely not allowed to drink whiskey out of it, though. 
Um, so these are some of my favorite features of the glass. Uh, because it is plastic, you don't get the sensation that you would if you're drinking out of crystal. Um, so it's got a rose gold kind of mouthpiece that gives you that cold touch to your mouth. Um, like I said, there's kind of this whiskey viewing dome, so you can see them floating around. Uh, but this uh, convex base plate here uh, holds the whiskey down um, on it when you hold it still. Uh, and you'll see a video in a minute. It kind of forms like a jelly-like substance in um, microgravity. Um, the base is printed in rose gold. Sometimes I tell people it's because my name is Anna Rose. Um, but the real reason <laughs> is gold is used a lot in space technology because it's uh, very anti-reactive, so um, it's not going to blow up in the sun. Um, and copper is obviously how whiskey is distilled, so I wanted to bring these two materials together, um, and that's where you get rose gold. Uh, and my favorite feature of the glass is the fact that it's rounded on the bottom. So here on Earth, um, if you put one down on a bar, it kind of sways side to side, reminding you that gravity is something that um, we take for granted down here. Um, but up in space, you don't need to put it down or you can't put it down. Um, so it's got a pull magnet um, in the bottom of it, and it means you can dock it on the top of your ship or uh, wherever it is, as demonstrated on the side of my fridge. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful um, piece of design. I'm very proud of it um, and the fact that we made it, um, but obviously we needed to test if it actually works. Um, we couldn't afford to get up to space, uh, so we set over the next best thing and went to the Zarm Drop Tower in Bremen, Germany. Um, so it's a massive tower. Uh, if you drop something down it, it simulates microgravity for three to four seconds. Uh, when we were there, they were testing um, whether cryogenics would work in microgravity. <laughs> so um, amazing to work with the scientists there and kind of give some credibility to the project. Um, we were up until about three in the morning waiting to get all the cameras uh, set and all very, very nervous because none of us had done anything like this before. Um, but it does work, which is great. Uh, so this is... <laughs> Um, what I was talking about, the jelly-like, uh, the whiskey kind of forms this jelly-like substance and then it um, travels up the capillaries uh, to a mouthpiece so you can drink from it. So now you can have an elegant drink in space. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, this, uh, this project kind of had a two-fold mission. Um, one was um, up in space in 200 years' time if we're still drinking Ballantines to remind us of where, we're com where we've come from and to give us that kind of earth -like drinking experience. But obviously the advertising campaign is down here on Earth right now. Uh, and down here it was um, intended to make us dream of how far we can go. And I think one of the most exciting things about this project for me was um, getting to dream up the future and think about um, what is the future that we want to design or to create and um, how can we kind of add all the little touches of humanity that we kind of take for granted now into this world that would either be quite um, scientific and sterile. Um, so we wrote an ad, which uh, I'll play for you. This is an image of Greece, by the way. This is Greece from space. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. Oh, sorry. To the generation knocking at the door. Break. Break it open. Let the knocker rust. Await no summons. High hearts and youth have destiny enough. The mystery and the power enshrined in you are all this time. And as this moment new. And none but you can tell what part you play. Nor can you tell until you know your way. For this alone, this always will succeed. The medical and magic of the deed.
yeah, it is advertising for a whiskey brand after all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that poem um, I found was written in the 19th century in Scotland um, around the same time that George Ballantyne first invented Ballantyne's whiskey. And I think it's kind of as true now as it was 200 years ago and hopefully will be 200 years um, from now. And it's, um, it's kind of, I guess, a call to arms to go out and make the world that you want to make. And it's, um, I'm having a wonderful time in Athens. It's the first time I've ever been here. But seeing all the stuff that's so, so old and from um, generations that are so different from the generation that we live in now. Um, it's really inspiring that, you know, they went out and they created this um, Western civilization that we live in now. And now, you know, with all these new technologies on our hand, um, VR and AR, IAI and v bleh, all, of, all of this stuff that um, we've heard about today, there is kind of this onus on us to um, go out and make the future. Um, and I love this, uh, I've kind of repurposed a Cindy Gallup quote that she repurposed of Alan Kay, um, but this is how I like to say it. Um, the best way to predict the future is to create it, and um, that seems like a really uh, wonderful thing for us to go out and do. Um, and I have all the 3D printed files for the space glass, so when you guys create this beautiful future, um, we can all have a lovely glass of whiskey. <laughs> You done? Yeah. Thank you very much. I have a couple of questions for you. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, uh, Luciana says you're you're my new favourite person. I saw you Aww. first, so you're my new favourite person. <laughs> hey, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things I wonder is how do you get the more crazy ideas sold? <laughs> uh, we built up a lot of trust with um, the client on yeah. this. Um, work Club had been working with Valentine's for about eight years, making digital T-shirts and animated tattoos, and okay. we kind of got a point to uh, to a point with them where they trusted us and they just wanted to make interesting yeah. work. So they'd seen good results from that stuff before. Yeah, that, exactly. That, that and it, it also happened uh, helps that their kind of brand is all about innovation and pioneering. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because yeah. they need a hook on something. That's a great thing to hook onto. You know? Yeah. Great idea. Um, what else do we have? Oh, a question from uh, Backbone. Okay. Uh, good name. Um, where can we get the Ballantine Space Glass? So, uh, yes. <laughs> I do get asked <laughs> this a lot. Um, so, I had this in my presentation, I took it out because I'm not sure um, if I'm really meant to say this, but sure. there was um, a big launch plan. We sent um, six of these glasses to a film director who was filming something in Australia last year. Okay. Um, and he was going to feature the space glass in Alien Covenant. And then there was Amazing. going to be uh, this big yeah. kind of PR thing where you could drink out of the drink in the bar before you went to see the movie. Um, and then just kind of budgets fell through um, on okay. both the movie side and the brand side. Um, so you can't really get one unless I print one for you. Okay, but, but so a just, of 3D just send a tweet right? to uh, yeah. Anna, she, she'll get it print, 3D printed. <laughs> I think Brandon's got a 3D printer, so maybe they can work together. Um, okay, and um, Maria asks, is it suitable for chocolate milk? Yeah, I think it probably would be. I think because, uh, because it's quite hard to clean things in space, because yes. obviously you can't just you know, put it in a dishwasher. Um, whiskey is actually quite a good thing to drink out of be uh, drink because yep. it has so much alcohol in it that yep. kind of cleans the glass Perfect. as you're drinking. Um, okay. Chocolate milk might be yeah. mm, slightly dodgy. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Anna, everyone. Thank you.